We're given these four different gambles in the table, and it says that Haley must choose between gamble A and B, and she also must choose between gamble C and D. It says which of the following preferences would likely represent a violation of the independence axiom, and then it lists some different preferences, answer choices A through D. And before we talk about those or list those, let's talk about what the independence axiom states. It states that if you have two sets of gambles and the differences between those gambles are the same, it should not affect our preferences. So let's take a look at how that applies here. We see that gamble A has a 15% more chance of getting zero than gamble B. Well, gamble D also has a 15% more chance of getting zero than gamble C. Gamble A has a 25% less chance of getting 1,000 than B. Well, gamble D also has a 25% less chance of getting 1,000 than C. Gamble A has a 10% more chance of getting 5,000 than B. And gamble D has a 10% more chance of getting 5,000 than C. So, because the differences between the two sets of gambles are the same, we can conclude that if we do prefer A to B, we should also prefer D to C. Similarly, if we prefer B to A, we should also prefer C to D. And lastly, if we're indifferent between A and B, we should also be indifferent between C and D. Well, let's look at, look at our answer choices and see which ones are wrong. Option A says we do prefer B to A and we prefer C to D. Well, this is consistent with our expected utility model. This is likely to represent somebody who's very risk averse. We notice that gambles B and C are the less risky gamble when compared to D and A and D. The way we know that is because gambles A and D both have the highest percent chance of ending at both of the extreme outcomes, either zero or 5,000. They also, gambles A and D also have the higher expected wealth, but they're more risky. So if somebody were to prefer B to A, they should also prefer C to D. And again, this represents somebody who's pretty risk averse. So we can cancel that out because that's not a violation of the independence axiom. Option choice B is our right answer. And we'll talk about why in just a second. Let's look at option choice C. It says that we're indifferent between A and B and we're also indifferent between C and D. And like we said, this is also consistent with our expected utility model. So we can get rid of that. That is not a violation of the independence axiom. Same reasons. Option D, we say we do prefer A to B, and we prefer D to C. This is also consistent with our expected utility model, and this is because, again, A is a more risky, higher expected wealth gamble. And if we prefer that to B, it would make sense that we also prefer D to C, where D is the more risky, higher expected wealth gamble. So that leaves us with our answer, which is the correct answer, which says that we prefer A to B, and we prefer C to D. And this is wrong because like we said, if we were to prefer A to B, we should also prefer D to C. So this likely represents a violation of the independence axiom.